verses 41 to 47. First, they did not love Christ, if God were your father, you would love me. He had disproved their relation to Abraham by their going about to kill him, v 40, but here he disproves their relation to God by their not loving and owning him. A man may pass for a child of Abraham if he do not appear an enemy to Christ by gross sin, but he cannot approve himself a child of God unless he be a faithful friend and follower of Christ. Note, all that have God for their father have a true love to Jesus Christ, an esteem of his person, a grateful sense of his love, a sincere affection to his cause and kingdom, a complacency in the salvation wrought out by him and in the method and terms of it, and a care to keep his commandments, which is the surest evidence of our love to him. We are here in a state of probation, upon our trial how we will conduct ourselves towards our Maker, and accordingly it will be with us in the state of retribution. God has taken various methods to prove us, and this was one, he sent his Son into the world, with sufficient proofs of his sonship and mission, concluding that all that called him Father would kiss his Son, and bid him welcome who was the firstborn among many brethren, see 1 JN 5 1. By this our adoption will be proved or disproved did we love Christ, or no. If any man do not, he is so far from being a child of God that he is anathema, accursed, 1 Co 16 22. Now our Saviour proves that if they were God's children they would love him, for, saith he, I proceeded forth and came from God. They will love him, for, 1. He was the Son of God, I proceeded forth from God. E exiled on this means his divine exiliasis, or origin from the Father, by the communication of the divine essence, and also the union of the divine logos to his human nature, so Dr. Whitby. Now this could not but recommend him to the affections of all that were born of God. Christ is called the Beloved, because, being the Beloved of the Father, he is certainly the Beloved of all the Saints, f 1 6. 2. He was sent of God, came from him as an ambassador to the world of mankind. He did not come of himself, as the false prophets, who had not either their mission or their message from God, j 23 21. Observe the emphasis he lays upon this, I came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He had both his credentials and his instructions from God, he came to gather together in one the children of God, ch 1151, to bring many sons to glory, Hebrew 2.10. And would not all God's children embrace with both arms a messenger sent from their father on such errands? But these Jews made it appear that they were nothing akin to God, by their want of affection to Jesus Christ. Secondly, they did not understand him. It was a sign they did not belong to God's family that they did not understand the language and dialect of the family, you do not understand my speech, v 43, ten lalian ten men. Christ's speech was divine and heavenly, but intelligible enough to those that were acquainted with the voice of Christ in the Old Testament. Those that had made the word of the Creator familiar to them needed no other key to the dialect of the Redeemer, and yet these Jews make strange of the doctrine of Christ, and find knots in it, and I know not what stumbling stones. Could a Galilean be known by his speech? An Ephraimite by his Sibboleth? And would any have the confidence to call God Father to whom the Son of God was a barbarian, even when he spoke the will of God in the words of the Spirit of God? Note, those who are not acquainted with the divine speech have reason to fear that they are strangers to the divine nature. Christ spoke the words of God, ch. 334, in the dialect of the kingdom of God, and yet they, who pretended to belong to the kingdom, understood not the idioms and properties of it, but like strangers, and rude ones too, ridiculed it. And the reason why they did not understand Christ's speech made the matter much worse, even because you cannot hear my word, that is, you cannot persuade yourselves to hear it attentively, impartially, and without prejudice, as it should be heard. The meaning of this cannot is an obstinate will not, as the Jews could not hear Stephen, Acts 7:57, nor Paul, Acts 23:22. Note, the rooted antipathy of men's corrupt hearts to the doctrine of Christ is the true reason of their ignorance of it, and of their errors and mistakes about it. They do not like it nor love it, and therefore they will not understand it, like Peter, 
who pretended he knew not what the damsel said, MT 26 colon 70, when in truth he knew not what to say to it. You cannot hear my words, for you have stopped your ears, PS 58 colon 4, 5, and God, in a way of righteous judgment, has made your ears heavy, ISA 610. Having thus disproved their relation both to Abraham and to God, he comes next to tell them plainly whose children they were, you are of your father the devil, v44. If they were not God's children, they were the devils, for God and Satan divide the world of mankind, the devil is therefore said to work in the children of disobedience, f2 colon 2. All wicked people are the devil's children, children of Belial, 2 co 615, the serpent's seed, general 315, children of the wicked one, MT 1338. They partake of his nature, bear his image, obey his commands, and follow his example. Idolaters said to a stock, Thou art our father, J227. This is a high charge, and sounds very harsh and horrid, that any of the children of men, especially the church's children, should be called children of the devil, and therefore our Savior fully proves it. By a general argument, the lusts of your father you will do, Thelet Poian. You do the devil's lusts, the lusts which he would have you to fulfill, you gratify and please him, and comply with his temptation, and are led captive by him at his will, nay, you do those lusts which the devil himself fulfills. Fleshly lusts and worldly lusts the devil tempts men to, but, being a spirit, he cannot fulfill them himself. The peculiar lusts of the devil are spiritual wickedness, the lusts of the intellectual powers, and their corrupt reasonings, pride and envy, and wrath, and malice, enmity to that which is good, and enticing others to that which is evil, these are lusts which the devil fulfills, and those who are under the dominion of these lusts resemble the devil, as the child does the parent. The more there is of contemplation, and contrivance, and secret complacency, in sin, the more it resembles the lusts of the devil. You will do the devil's lusts. The more there is of the will in these lusts, the more there is of the devil in them. When sin is committed of choice and not by surprise, with pleasure and not with reluctancy, when it is persisted in with a daring presumption and a desperate resolution, like theirs that said, we have loved strangers and after them we will go, then the sinner will do the devil's lusts. The lusts of your father you delight to do, so Dr. Hammond, they are rolled under the tongue as a sweet morsel. By two particular instances, wherein they manifestly resembled the devil murder and lying. The devil is an enemy to life, because God is the God of life and life is the happiness of man, and an enemy to truth, because God is the God of truth and truth is the bond of human society. He was a murderer from the beginning, not from his own beginning, for he was created an angel of light, and had a first estate which was pure and good, but from the beginning of his apostasy, which was soon after the creation of man. He was Anthropoctonus homicida, a manslayer. He was a hater of man, and so in affection and disposition a murderer of him. He has his name, Satan, from Sidna hatred. He maligned God's image upon man, envied his happiness, and earnestly desired his ruin, was an avowed enemy to the whole race. He was man's tempter to that sin which brought death into the world, and so he was effectually the murderer of all mankind, which in Adam had but one neck. He was a murderer of souls, deceived them into sin, and by it slew them, ROM 711, poisoned man with the forbidden fruit, and, to aggravate the matter, made him his own murderer. Thus he was not only at the beginning, but from the beginning, which intimates that thus he has been ever since, as he began so he continues, the murderer of men by his temptations. The great tempter is the great destroyer. The Jews called the devil the angel of death. He was the first wheel in the first murder that ever was committed by Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, 1 JN 312. If the devil had not been very strong in Cain, he could not have done such an unnatural thing as to kill his own brother. Cain killing his brother by the instigation of the devil, the devil is called the murderer, which does not speak Cain's personal guilt the less, but the devil's the more, whose torments, we have reason to think, will be the greater, when the time comes, 
for all that wickedness into which he has drawn men. See what reason we have to stand upon our guard against the wiles of the devil, and never to hearken to him, for he is a murderer, and certainly aims to do us mischief, even when he speaks fair, and to wonder that he who is the murderer of the children of men should yet be, by their own consent, so much their master. Now herein these Jews were followers of him, and were murderers, like him, murderers of souls, which they led blindfold into the ditch, and made the children of hell, sworn enemies of Christ, and now ready to be his betrayers and murderers, for the same reason that Cain killed Abel. These Jews were that seed of the serpent that were to bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, now you seek to kill me. He was a liar. A lie is opposed to truth, 1 JN 2 21, and accordingly the devil is here described to be.